Greetings YouTube, Fuzzfinger here, welcome back to Final Fantasy 4 and today we're going to begin the arduous process of farming for the elusive rainbow pudding so stay tuned. In order to get this item and I'm going to explain why you're going to need this item a little bit later today but you do need to get it, it's very important. You want to head over to this area which is the antlion's den and it's at the northern area of the map and you're going to want to make sure that Cecil has the treasure hunter augment equipped you can replace the uh, experience farming augment for the time being because the enemies here are going to be weak anyhow and you don't want to be using auto battle because kick's going to be your friend for this little routine that we're going to be doing here so the item that we're going to be farming is the rainbow pudding and it has a chance to drop from any of the flan slash slimy type enemies in the game. The Uzis. You know the ones I mean, we have fought them a few times. Unfortunately, it has a very, very low chance of dropping off any of those creatures that I just mentioned. In fact, I believe the chance is 0.2%, which is obviously very slim indeed. With the treasure hunter augment equipped on Cecil, your chance doubles. So it goes from 0.2% chance per battle with those Uzis to 0.4%. Still not massive, but it's actually quite a big uh, difference, really, in that it's going to take you half the time. On average, I suspect, isn't it? So this is the small area that you want. And the reason you want that is you can summon these Uzis over and over and over using your sirens. And I've only got three left because I've been farming quite uh, often already. So what you want to do is use your sirens, go down to about uh, one or two, and then if you haven't found the rainbow pudding, just reload your save game, make sure you're saved outside this cave, and then come back in and go through your sirens again. If you don't get it, reload your game, come back in, over and over, etc, etc, until eventually you get the rainbow pudding item. So using your siren brings in these four yellow oozes. The reason I recommend doing these is because these are the easiest in the game. So you can literally end this battle within seconds and then start the next one. There's a single ooze that spawns. In this case, we didn't get any drops. But there's a single ooze that spawns um, in the final dungeon we've just been doing. Although it's a rare chance of spawning, we can use siren on it. But despite the fact it has a very slightly higher chance of dropping, and I mean very slightly higher, instead of 0.2% I think it's got 0.3% uh, it takes so much longer to kill that you can literally go through about seven or eight of these battles that we're doing now in the time it would take to kill one of those so in most instances you're gonna kick these to death but event uh, at some point you know they're gonna land a hit off it's not gonna miss in that case just make sure you've got kick set to uh, the top of your list so that Cecil will counter with it and you know they'll die anyway so anyhow we've got a potion on that attempt that is at the rainbow pudding uh, we're just going to keep going and eventually this rainbow pudding is going to drop there we go about 45 minutes later and the rainbow pudding is mine so it did take some perseverance I'll be honest with you uh, and a couple of sessions as well because I had to kill I know 45 minutes doesn't sound a lot but I had to kill a lot of those uh, yellow enemy things in order to get it to drop uh, but just persevere folks and the rainbow pudding as you can see will eventually be yours right so with our rainbow pudding and I'm just going to show you where it appears in your inventory it'll be the last item on the list no doubt and it's not under key items it's under just normal items we're going to head over to the one the only yes naming way or whatever he's calling himself nowadays so this is the item that he's going to be after and we're going to find him over in Agart. We did actually visit him here last, or this is what, rather where he... We didn't visit him here, I don't think. This is where we sent him. Either way, this is where he's going to be. And Agart is located just here. We're going to make our way up to the northernmost house. And that's where we'll find him, standing in the doorway, blocking entrance, so we'll speak to him, Pudding Way. And he asks us if we managed to find some rainbow pudding. We did, of course. So we'll go ahead and give that to him. Uh, 
and he goes off all happy and we'll be approaching him again shortly but for now let's head into the house he was blocking because there's a phoenix down we can nab and now we're going to head back to the airship and head underground once more and fortunately we're right next to the place where we do that outside of agar here we And we're going to head down to the castle. Once again, we're going to be finding Pudding Way. I'm going to show you where that is. This is probably the most confusing castle in the game, in my opinion, the Dwarven Castle. But hopefully we'll get there together. So you want to look for the weapon in the armour shop and then go through the door in the middle of them. And this is the Lally Ho pub. We have been here before, and look who it is. The one and only Pudding Way. And now he's moping, so has called himself Moping Way. And what's this? He's angry with us. And we have to enter into battle with him. I kind of feel guilty hitting him. But that's what we have to do, unfortunately. I think one hit is enough to take him out, even if you're not doing maximum damage. And we get an augment reward for this. The Eye Gorge Augment, which you can give to anyone really. And next up we're going to head back into the airship and fly over uh, to the Esper place where we can go to the Fame Arch. So this is the cave we need to go to, we've been here several times now but just on the off chance you don't remember how to get to the Fame Arch. Enter the passage of the Eidolons. Speak to the Eidolon that's at the entrance here and he'll teleport you down into the actual Fame Arch itself. And then we just head on around here. And away we go. Right then, so we're looking for the house in the top west corner. And then Pudding Way, or Moping Way as he's now known, will be just down here. So we'll go ahead and speak to him again. So now Moping Way has become Loving Way. And <laughs> now we've got to give him the name of one of the girls that we're seeing. Oh, we can actually type it on the keyboard. So I guess we'll go for Rosa. That was utterly bizarre. The keyboard just was not working. And it took me about 10 minutes of restarting the game and messing around with all the controls to actually get to the point where I could type the name. Oh, I forgot where I was now. Oh yes, we'd uh, embarrassed Rosa, hadn't we? Right. I've now got to control this with the keyboard until I can save again and exit and reactivate my controller. That was uh, really, really strange, to tell you the truth. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, leave the Fame Arch, and I don't even know how to bring the map up here, so I'm going to struggle to get out, but there we go. Uh, leave the Fame Arch, and then make our way over to the uh, re to the town of Mesidia next. See you there. Before we actually go over to Mesidia, we're going to take a brief detour over to Tomra and go on a shopping trip. So here we are, and there's a few things I want to get. Well, actually, one main thing I want to get, and we might need to sell some stuff to do it. And that Stardust, as you can see, it's quite expensive. But it's important. And we need a lot of it as well, actually. 
So, first of all, let's sell a load of rubbish, including weapons and armour that we're not going to be using. Just sell what you want, basically. Try and keep some of the higher end stuff, because it can be useful for throwing. But other than that, just get rid of the stuff you don't need. Uh, we need to actually go through the vendor, though, first. Okay, so I've got over a million gil now. So it should be enough to stock up on these stardusts. Oh, what's going on? And we're going to need a lot of them. Okay, 334,000 gil to get to 99. So we're going to do that. We're going to stock up. And that leaves us plenty of gil then to buy some sirens a little bit later on. We're going to want to stock up on those uh, as well. Right then, so that's the detour taken care of. Now we're going to head back over to the one, the only, Missidia. So back on the surface, Missidia is just over to the east of course, near where the other airship is actually. Look at that. Handy pointer marker, eh? So here we are, we've been here also a few times now, so hopefully we're starting to learn our way around everything here. We're going to just head north into the Elder's building. The Hall of Prayer. Okay, so now we're going to want to uh, find this fella once again. And our loving way becomes wedding way. And we get the Rose's Love Augment. Obviously the name of that will depend upon the name you gave him earlier on. And I'm going to go ahead and just give that to Cecil. Okay. And right, now we are going to head back to the moon. So let's head over to the lunar whale and make our way there next. Back on the moon, you'll want to land in this location here, which is the southernmost crater, I guess. Uh, we're going to enter into Hummingway Abode. And look at all these hummingways. And we can see that Weddingway has come to the moon now with his bride. And now he becomes Hummingway the Lunarian. And we can have a chat to his bride as well. But we don't get a dance or anything. So the only other thing we can do here, and that's not the end of that quest by the way, just to clarify that. Um, there should be a vendor. Let me find them. Ah, here we go. And this vendor sells sirens. So we're going to stock up on those. We need maximum amounts. We're going to get 99. Well, we're going to get 96 to make 99. So we should have 99 siren and 99 stardust at this point. And there's uh, one more thing we need to do now. And that's the uh, random location for this fella, Hummingway, the married or whatever it was he called himself. Anyway, uh, I'm going to point those all out to you. So the first location you can appear is just southwest of Baron Castle here in the Chocobo Forest. Let's have a look around. I think there's about 10 locations he can appear in. But it is completely random. And I'm satisfied it's not here. So let's move on. Next up, we've got the Chocobo Forest uh, to the northeast of Fable Castle. And once you've explored the location, if he's not there, then uh, that's a safe location in the sense that he's not going to be there in your game. Once it's decided where he is, it's decided. So although it's random, it doesn't, it doesn't change on the game that you're on. And I'm satisfied it's not here. 
just fly north from Fable Castle so you appear at the bottom of the map because the next location is going to be uh, just to the south of Mount Ordeals. You've almost finished this game by the way. At least you've almost finished your first playthrough if you're following along with me. You can actually, as you, I'm sure you know by now, uh, get more rewards by playing through a game on New Game Pluses and whatnot. Mainly in terms of the augments and who you give them to. You can max out your character power, your party's power even further. Okie dokie, he's not here. So next we're going to move over into the Troya region. So the first Troya location is just south. You can actually park right next to the Chocobo Forest, though it is quite tight. And it doesn't look like we're going to have any luck here either. Right, so it's time to move on once more. This time we're going to be going to the Chocobo Forest. That's just above. Or just to the east of Troya. Which means we need to park here. There's one there. And is there any more? Yeah, I think it's just that one, isn't it? Just gonna check over here. Oh, no, let's try this one. Oh, the elusive naming way. Being a royal pain. Okay, let's move on then to the one we have to run to. I did just go to the Chocobo Forest north of Troya there. Uh, and he wasn't in there obviously. Next up is the underground lake area which is located here just south of uh, what's this place called? Darna Sea or something? Uh, anyhow he can appear on the western side of the map on the first floor you enter when you go through to here. He wasn't there. So next up as far as I'm concerned is Mount Hobbs. So at Mount Hobbs you want to enter through the east slope and this is where the Mom Bomb uh, was fought. And it's also where you have a chance of finding the naming way guy. Just here on the summit, through this door, around here, as you can see. No surprises, he's not here. You can actually reload your game, by the way, rather than running all the way back out. Once again, it doesn't change the position of naming way uh, by reloading a save game before you found him. So you haven't got to explore the old locations. Next up, back underground, is the Sylph Cave. And don't forget, you're going to want to cast Float on everybody here. And we're going to be heading towards B2. And in the centre uh, of the northern area of B2 is where he can appear. Next up is the Lair of the Father back on the moon. And if you head over to the secret path on the first floor to where we looted the Genji Shield previously, then he can appear here. But alas, of course, he hasn't. Well, it seems I didn't explore the Sylph Cave enough because I've actually found him and this is on B2. So from B1, just go all the way south and it's a bit of an annoying uh, journey actually. From B1, go all the way south and then when you're in B2, you'll actually appear in the centre of this map. So go south to the bottommost exit and that'll take you back up to B1 again. Then head through the western uh, exit on B1 which will bring you back to this floor at the bottom left hand corner then just make your way all the way up to the north and head to the secret path to this chest here. So hopefully that won't be necessary and I just had bad luck finding this dude in this place. But the point is I found him so I'm very happy about that. And now he becomes going my way the free spirit and this is the last time he changes. Thank goodness. And we get the ultimate reward at this point. It gives us the safe travel augment, a beautiful augment that when equipped stops any random battles. We also get an achievement as well. 
So we're certainly going to give that augment before we forget to Cecil. And we'll do that now. And so just as a little test of that. We obviously can be placed level lust because we won't be getting into random battles anyway. And now we can just run all over the place. Look, I can even show you in reverse the route that I took to get to this uh, entrance. How good is that? No random encounters at all. And you know what folks, apart from hunting down some rare items that you might want to get, that's actually all the optional content in this game completed. We can head back to the final dungeon and take on the final bosses whenever we're ready. Naming way has finished and so have we. This might be random encounterless, but it's still not floatless. But obviously now we're going to be able to make our way all the way back through the uh, end dungeon while avoiding all the annoying enemy encounters. Unless of course we want to spend some time levelling. But there you go, reverse order of how I reach Naming Way here in the Sylph Cave. And back we are, safe and sound, ready for me to save. But folks, I'm finishing the episode here. Oh boy, am I finishing uh, now. And thanks for joining me. I hope this has been helpful to you, discovering all the lovely locations that our rabbit friend could appear in. Uh, but do come back next time, guys. We'll probably have a bash at taking on the final bosses or something. So I hope it's been enjoyable for you. If it has, don't forget to leave a like and come back again soon. Take care.